we will go to Jason McLeod. Um, Jason is a civil resistance scholar. Uh, Jason's uh, in particularly uh, have been uh, researching, but also uh, be part of the monitoring all the uh, civil resistance uh, in, in, in West Papua. So please, Jason, uh, we want to hear for you from you as a civil resistance scholar, uh, what are other ways uh, we can understand uh, from the anti-racist uprising in August and uh, September in, in West Papua last year, uh, especially from the point of view of uh, civil resistance? Please, Jason. Thank you, Rosa. And uh, a warm greetings to uh, all the panelists and to all of you uh, around the world who are watching. It's such a wonderful honor to be on this call uh, with you all and, and to see, you know, uh, my dear friends um, with me on the screen from West Papua and other parts of Australia and from the US. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Thank you. So I'm, I'm coming to you from uh, Jagera country in Mianjin or, or Brisbane in, in Australia. And I want to acknowledge uh, the elders, traditional owners, um, yeah, past, present and future, who have continued to care for this country uh, and to care for one another. And it's my, my fervent hope that we can have the humility and courage to, to learn from, from that and, and join together to support them you know, for a better world for all of us. And that's what this is all about. It's about seeing the interconnectedness between uh, racism, between occupation, uh, and all other forms of discrimination. And thank you, Rosa, for mention mentioning our friends, um, you know, who've just been arrested. These kind of things are just happening all the time. I also want to acknowledge all the other political, West Papuan political prisoners uh, in jail at the moment. All of them should be released without conditions. Um, and one of the things we often say when we're with our friends in West Papua is we acknowledge their names. And after their names, we say, Hadi, you know, so they're, they're present, they're with us. And then we ask the question, for how long are they present? And we reply, you know, for always, for always, for always. So we're here outside, they're inside, and together we're all part of the same struggle. So a, a couple of things that I just want to mention and, I'll, and, I'll, and I won't take up much time. I want to mention four, four things. The first thing is that the, the anti-racism uprising that took place in August and September last year was overwhelmingly a, a militant non-violent uprising. Yeah? You saw things like a 50 kilometre march from Sentani in the airport to the centre of town. You had young kids as young as primary school coming out and joining that march because of the day-to-day -day experiences of racism uh, that they have. You saw boycotts uh, of Indonesian food stuff. You saw people returning to, to gardening um, and, and Papuan food. You saw the governor, uh, Lucas Enembe, crying tears of frustration and anger that this is still going on time and time again. And you saw the occupation of parliament. Now, these are all forms of non-violent resistance. And this uprising was a very, very disciplined uprising. It was student-led. And again and again, as you look at the videos, we hear the speakers, we hear the students say things like, we are not against Indonesia. We are not against ordinary Indonesians. We are against a colonial and a racist and a violent occupation. And the students were very, very, and the other leaders were very, very clear about that. The second thing, I want to say is that, you know, the, the police have said that, you know, it's not an anti-racism march, it's a pro-freedom march. You know, this is a social movement. 
social movements are diverse. They're not an organization like the military or the police and they connect different things. People, you know, as uh, Pendetta Benny was talking about, people connect these things because their day-to-day -day experience is of the state not keeping them safe. In fact, it's the very opposite of the state endangering their lives. And so, you know, out of frustration and anger, a call to address racism quickly escalated into a call for freedom. And that is part of what, you know, social movement scholars talking, talk about bridging frames where you connect one struggle, one, one kind of movement with another movement. And this is a very natural and dynamic part of social movements. The fourth, the third thing I want to address is the international dimension of this. The West Papuans have seized uh, on this moment. Uh, they're connecting it with the Black Lives Matter movement. As Sarah said, the Black Lives movement matter is connecting it with West Papuans and other struggle of black people everywhere. You know, this is a, this is a global movement. In Australia, where I'm speaking from, you know, we have had 432 deaths in custody of, indig of indigenous people. We've had the, um, the recommendations from the Royal Commission into deaths and custody not addressed. And this is intimately connected to West Papua because you see the Australian police and the Australian military training the Indonesian police and the Indonesian military who continue to use violence to maintain their hold on West Papua so that mining companies like Australian companies like Rio Tinto can continue to, and colonial sugar refinery can continue to access West Papuan resources. These things are all connected. And that's why uh, Make West Papua Safe has responded to these call of students, you know, to look at how we can stand in solidarity and how we in Australia uh, and also New Zealand for those who are in New Zealand, for those of you in Fiji, in Papua New Guinea, in the United States, in Canada, your governments also train the Indonesian police and military. So we all need to stand together and address the violence that is exported from our countries to West Papua. That's how the occupation is maintained. That's how the racist, you know, violence is allowed to persist and fester because of the resources and support and legitimacy provided by foreign governments and police and military all around the world. The last thing um, I want to say, and Rose will speak about this a bit more, a bit more, and I'm gonna see if I can share my screen here. Uh, okay, excellent. All right, so is what you can do. So we are, we're asking everyone to stand in solidarity. We're not only the seven anti-racism activists, but all West Papuan political prisoners. We're asking you to, if there's an Indonesian embassy nearby you, we're asking you to protest and call for the release of the seven and all political prisoners without conditions. We're asking you to wear black clothes today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The, the verdict, will be hand, Gustav uh, tells us that the verdict will be handed down on Wednesday. Finally, we'd like, or not finally, the third thing, there's four things. The third thing is we would like you to spread out this news on social media and you'll see some hashtags there. You can go to the global call for action on the Make West Papua Safe website. Uh, and yeah, please share this uh, around social media. Use the hashtags that are there. Uh, as well, and and like Sarah was doing, you know, connect this to other struggles. You know, there's a one of the elders here in Brisbane, Auntie Lilla Watson. You know, she once said, you know, do not come to, you know, do not be part of uh, this movement. You know, if you've come to to protect protect me or to save me, but join us because your freedom is connected with my freedom. So that's it, all our freedom is connected together. All these struggles are interconnected. 
So you'll see on the where my cursor is, you'll see the link also to the uh, Amnesty International petition. There's an English and an Indonesian petition. And I'm highlighting here on my screen, these are the names of the judges that are presiding over seven uh, anti-racism activism. You can send a message. Here's their mobile number. I'm highlighting it on the screen. Send a message to them via WhatsApp. Uh, ask them very politely and very respectfully to release the seven and all political prisoners without conditions. And you can also send them an email. There's the email there. I think that's enough for me, uh, from me. Just a huge privilege to be on this call and thank you to all the panelists uh, and to you, Rosa, for moderating. Thank you, everyone.